Did NASA just find an alien space colony? That may sound crazy, but hang on to your hats because that is where we're going. If you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe, bang the update notification bell, and click all. Because right now, both NASA and the Department of Defense are investigating this phenomenology known as uh, UAPs, or as we used to call it, UFOs. Unidentified aerial platforms, whatever they may or may not be, it's become a hot topic among uh, circles that used to would not discuss such things or take them very seriously. Now, it's still a matter of how they're to be taken. But NASA uh, had a discovery recently that, uh, well, they ran into something potentially that we got to talk about. But first, we got to give some background. And the background is that while they're thinking uh, these things and while we're looking at possible uh, UFOs, UAPs, they've just come up with a theory for why we might actually be alone in this universe to answer the Fermi paradox. Why may we actually still be alone? Uh, as you may know, the Italian-American physicist uh, Fermi, he came up with this concept called Fermi's Paradox at a party, bas basically, back in the 1950s, where he was sitting around considering, well, why in the world is it, given that uh, we have all these prospects for life out there, and it'll only take maybe 100 million years for once a civilization to start, to cross the entire galaxy, to colonize it all in great quantity, given the age of the galaxy, why aren't they here? And we got some new data on that too, because now we're discovering stars are, have had planets a lot longer than we thought, perhaps Earth-like planets to boot. So maybe twice as long as Earth has been here. So we're going to go all into that. So given these things, you know, he blurted out in this party, well, why aren't they here? Where is everyone's what he said. So that is known as the Fermi paradox. Why is it that we're just not crawling with them? Well, maybe we are. <laughs> And maybe we're not. This is the Drake equation. Drake just died. The guy who came up with the Drake equation. He just passed away a few weeks ago. Anyway, this is the terms that he came up with for saying uh, what was the probability for life from another planet. What, what would be the probability that they could actually be out there and uh, send signals that we could detect or detect our signals. And so this is the famous equation that prompted this conversation. Where are they? Holy smoke. Well, you know, I've done a video, and I've always been a big fan for this idea that we're getting visitors yet from outer space. Y'all may recall I did this video, not from space. And it was referencing these things that the Department of Defense were talking about and some other people. And I was suggesting that maybe they're ours. Maybe they're already here. Maybe they're from another dimension. But I threw out several reasons for why they might not be at space. But yet, we just made a finding. Or perhaps there is a finding that's coming to better light now that may bring this to question, possibly, possibly. But, you know, I say you got to be a skeptic, but at the same time, you got to wonder and keep your mind open. Not so much that your brain falls out, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Well, getting back to this notion of uh, NASA coming up with a reason for why they may not be here, uh, there's a theory called the Great Filter. And this is not a new idea, but it's out there in the world of the Fermi Paradox. And it's gained a lot of traction now, especially among a lot of NASA people, because it would seem that we would see bigger evidence for such a civilization in our solar system or you know, beyond mainly. Uh, we should be able to see the, some form of Dyson spheres or something by now and, and more stars being red shifted due to having Dyson spheres built around. But we're not really seeing that. So this great filter idea posits the idea that civilizations uh, grow and develop, but eventually they wipe themselves out. They they destroy themselves before we ever get the chance to meet them and greet them. Ah, but the chilling aspect of this is that maybe we ourselves are on that track toward the great filter. And looking around the world today, it's kind of hard to argue with that. It is hard to argue with the idea that we may be headed toward a self-extinguisher. What did it take a bunch of rocket scientists at NASA to tell us that? <laughs> oh yeah, I am a rocket scientist. I am a contractor at NASA. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, knowing of that eventuality, we can get smart and figure out how to survive these eventualities and climb aboard it. But right now, we're not doing good. We're not making good progress in that area, in my humble opinion. And you can check out my sister channel, Green Gregs, 
where I talk about those kind of things quite a bit, and we'll be moving that content over to another new channel called Swivelhead News in time. So, guys, you know, in terms of this uh, technologies and the possibilities, though, you know, maybe these things are from here. Uh, it just so happens, I, my first videos on this channel was about anti-gravity research. It was about, it was from a presentation this lady made here, Amy Eskridge. She was starting an institute for advanced studies for anti-gravity. She was going to try to fund these efforts. And we had a big meeting at the Huntsville Library, the Huntsville, Alabama L5 Society. The whole room was just packed full of engineers and Marshall Space Flight Center propulsion specialists, engineers, scientists, uh, a lot of top level NASA leads and advanced propulsion were in the room. Nobody giggled. Everybody took it dead serious and was quite engaged in the discussions, uh, largely concerning a lot of other individuals who've taken a crack at this technology over the past several decades. I'm talking individuals. <clears throat> if individuals could come close to developing this stuff, and if this kind of stuff is possible, as some of these tic-tac type things flying around seem to indicate, then it is quite possible that a nation state, possibly even back in the 1940s, may have developed this stuff. Possibly. I'm not saying that happened. But a lot of people think the Germans did it. And uh, there were stories of Foo Fighters amongst uh, our aircraft as we were flying over and bombing Germany. So these Foo Fighters, what were they? Were they German advanced craft or were they something else? Well, that's hard to say because the flip side of this is if, 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 if this technology is possible and if, if, if uh, <clears throat> there are civilizations out there and they're more advanced than us, well, maybe they have a better handle on this and they invented this stuff and maybe we're seeing them flying around. I said if, <laughs> or if they're from another dimension right here along with us, which is something I have highly, highly would be suspicious of. But, you know, hey, we've just made some recent findings that indicates there might be something from out there, from the Great Beyond. Maybe. Maybe. And the, the buttressing uh, idea behind that, in, including, uh, in addition to a couple of things we've cited of late, is that astronomers find wreckage of a destroyed solar system just recently. And the uh, wreckage is polluted with what they believe to be once Earth-like planets. This is the oldest stellar remnants around. And this one that they're talking about is just 90 light years from Earth. I love that picture, right? <laughs> 90 light years from Earth, the remnants of a wrecked solar system. This ancient star that started it all is called WDJ. Sounds like a, a, a solvent, right? <laughs> WDJ 2147-4035. That's a lovely name, right? <laughs> and it's it, and it's said to be a, a white dwarf star only 90 light years away. These are stellar rem remnants, like our sun will eventually, when after it burns out, it'll turn, well, as it's getting hotter and hotter in the last of its days, it'll probably turn into red giant and swallow all the inner planets, most likely to include Earth. And then it will blow off its outer shell and the remnant will be a white dwarf star for a long time before it finally browns out so this is a stellar remnant <clears throat> it was around for a long time so they actually believe this thing is 10.7 billion years old 10.7 billion years old this star twice the age of our sun over twice the age of our sun and <clears throat> get this it's been cooling off for 10.2 billion years <coughs> At least that's what they believe. So this star probably had a short life as a main sequence star. It had a short life of being hot uh, in the way our sun is today. So it may, although life on our planet seems to have started about as soon as our rocks on Earth cooled off three and a half billion years ago, uh, it just so happens that that would probably wouldn't have been enough time for life that way to start around this planet. But this planet has planetary remnants around it. It's got the wreckage of planets. That is considered unusual because uh, heavy elements that make planets called by astronomers to be metals. Now, astronomers refer to anything bigger than hydrogen and helium as a metal. And some of them even helium is a metal <laughs> because it's more dense than hydrogen, which is believed to be the initial element of the universe. And they believe that all these heavy elements were created both from fusion within stars and from 
is stellar explosions, novas, supernovas. Those two fuse certain heavier elements. So to find these heavy elements that would form an Earth-like planet with materials that look like the crust of Earth, they're saying they're finding stuff that look like the crust of Earth around one of these stars, then that means that there had to be a lot more of that stuff far earlier than we thought, which leads to the possibility that planets like Earth may have existed twice as long ago as our planet i.e. billions of years, the Earth's figure to last billions of years from now. So this is, you know, over five, ten billion years ago, there could have been planets with life ten billion years ago. Could that life have advanced? Could it have developed? Well, by, by the uh, Drake equation, possibly, by Fermi's paradox, this galaxy should have been completely colonized long, 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 long ago billions of years ago, before our sun even was started, long before our sun was found, this whole galaxy should have been colonized if life had started in progress. There's a lot of ifs, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. And the fact now yeah, that we're finding planets like that means the prospects for life may be far greater out there than even what we're looking and surveying at stars today. Because now we're looking far into the past. Wow, guys, this is heavy. It's interesting. It really puts a new twist, a new paradigm into the whole question. And of course, it does go back to visit that thing of, uh, did they filter each other out or themselves out? Is there a great filter? Did civilizations just go bonkers and wipe themselves out? Is it possible that no intelligent civilization can handle the powers that it would take to colonize space because the same powers also enable you to destroy yourselves? Uh, actually, I think it could be escaped question is, is, is it going to be good guys or bad guys escaping? Would it have been Hitler in World War II if he'd have made his conquest and, and the rocket boys there and went out into space? Or maybe uh, uh, Stalinist Russia or a, an open, free and open society? Maybe a little bit of both gets up into the inverse. Uh, we'll come to that topic soon. This is actually the first part of a two-part discussion. So it really comes down to this. Knock, knock. It's someone out there. Well, it just so happens. Maybe. Maybe so. Maybe we got to say hello because we got a visitor in our solar system that came from outside of our solar system, known as a Mawa Mawa, <laughs> if I can say that, even close to being right. It was discovered by uh, Robert uh, Warwick, and he was uh, <clears throat> he discovered this thing on the 19th of October, 2017, five days after it zipped past planet Earth. I mean, it zipped past us, and they go, oh, this thing went right past, well, actually, before and uh, preceded us in orbit. So, guys, they discovered after the fact, and they discovered this thing from the uh, from the Pan-STARRS Telescope Observatory there in Hawaii, the telescopes at the Halikala, I have, forgive me if I can't pronounce the Hawaiian name just quite right, observatory there in Hawaii. So, <clears throat> uh, actually, let, let me rephrase it. No, he found it. 40 days after it passed its closest point to the sun, we yeah, have it's five days after it passed close to Earth. So guys, you know, this thing had entered our solar system, passed the sun, was on its way out of the solar system, uh, passed Earth before we ever discovered it. But that's not what makes it interesting. Many things do make it interesting. It appeared to be heavy in metals, according to some, in the appearance of it. And it had this odd shape of being like 10 times longer than it was wide. But that's not the oddest thing. The oddest thing was this object, hey, hang on, but we got that really talked about it, was A.V. Loeb. A.V. Loeb took great interest in this object because it had some very strange characteristics. He come to think that this very well could be from an alien civilization because its properties are so weird. And now, now A.V. Loeb is no lightweight. A.V. Loeb is the founding director at the Harvard Black Hole Institute. So he is one of the top astronomers at Harvard University. And now he is taking this topic quite seriously. And this isn't the oddest thing he's got to say, but the reason he said that was because this thing entered the solar system. It didn't take the regular hyperbolic trajectory uh, it, it should have taken just given gravitational laws. It actually accelerated after it was leaving. 
as if it had it some form of propulsion. That is what got the attention. That's what got a lot of physicists scratching their heads and trying, of course, they will always try to explain it away by some natural phenomenology. But maybe it was a virtual light cell. You know, my friend uh, talking about light cells here recently, uh, Les Johnson, that we did a video together, but the geometry of this thing, if it's that thick, how would it be a light cell? You need a lot of area for light to push against to accelerate something massive. So what was it? What's going on there? Well, that really got A.V. Loeb's attention. Again, this is A.V. Loeb. He's a professor and astronomer at Harvard University. And he took great, great interest in this. But the craziest thing was, he looked at this thing. He said, there could be four quadrillion alien objects in our solar system. Now, he's not saying that thing was an alien spacecraft. But he's got to be open to the idea. He said, four quadrillion. If Greg, that's a crazy number. Our solar system is incredibly large. And this is based on density, just based on how many we have seen. And the number that we have seen has just been three more objects passed through our solar system on a hyperbolic trajectory. Just, you know, similar to this. This suggests they're actually interstellar objects, not from our solar system. In the past, uh, making a total of four in the past eight years. So when you just look at that density of what we've seen coming in close enough to be observed, and you look at the entire size and volume of our solar system, which is huge, that's how he comes up with these ginormous numbers. <laughs> Actually, the number he came up with originally was 40 decillion. Yeah, I mean, these numbers like, what? <laughs> 40 decillion in the entire solar system, you know, beyond the, the, our, our range of our instruments outside the range of our instruments. Now he narrowed it down to that little tiny four quatillion <laughs> by just considering the habitable zone near the star. Oh, how sweet. But <laughs> guys, for what's the chances that they'd all be hiding? Yeah, that's where we like to lounge out, right? You got water and that's where you can, you know, pull up your pool chair and have a little drink with a umbrella, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe the aliens would better hide out somewhere else so they're not so visible, right? <laughs> so, of course, it could still just be a space rock, right? But, hey, if you want to hide out, where is the best place to hide? Maybe the best hiding place is the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a belt of, uh, of comets and rocks and other objects <clears throat> they extend beyond the orbit of Neptune out toward the Oort cloud, which might be another good hiding place, by the way. But so far, we've cataloged over 2,000 Kuiper Belt trans-Neptunian objects. And these are just a tiny fraction of what we believe to be out there. Yeah, this is another view of this Oumuamua uh, transiting through our solar system. So our inner solar system was pretty tiny when we looked at Plant, rings of the outer planets or their orbits. Here's a video, guys. Check this video out. That's what it'll like zooming through. Wow, looking out. <laughs> Play it again. All right, that's another view of it. Ah. We've had a little finding. <laughs> and this one is especially interesting because this was discovered by NASA's New Horizon spacecraft. Yeah, that guy that went and, and took the picture of the big heart on Pluto, the planet Pluto, or the trans Neptunian object that goes inside the orbit of Neptune on occasion, known as Pluto, which I'm believing now is a uh, planetesimal, a, <laughs> a not quite yet a planet. Uh, thanks to Dr. Brown, who also went to Miami, Almada. Uh, so it's been downgraded from a planet for the time being. <laughs> but we've got another discovery, another object. This other object is 15810R1. 15810R1. It is a large trans Neptunian object. A comet, or possibly a rock, or is it? What is it? So this, this is kind of the orbit of the guy out there. Pluto, and here is uh, where New Horizon made its journey out. It had a gravity slingshot from Jupiter, 
out to Pluto and all these other objects. But this one object, the 15810R1, is rather strange. In April, something about April, right? In April of uh, 2016, the Kuiper Belt was reached by NASA's Deep Space Probe New Horizons. That's when it got there. And this is all after it passed the planet Pluto. Uh, the, the, this object, 15810 uh, R1, is named for the god of death, war, and the underworld, lovely god, in Celtic mythology. 15810 doesn't move anything like a typical object in the Kuiper Belt ought to move. In fact, if it was made of rock or ice, it should be flung apart by centrifugal force because it speeds and spins way too fast to be held together. You know, a lot of our asteroids are just rubble piles. So how is it that this guy, even if it's not just a rubber pile, if it's made of even solid ice or rock, it ought to be self-flung apart by its rotational rate. This is something that strikes uh, some people as being rather strange. You, know, you could say, well, maybe it's the core of a planet that's all just made out of uranium. <laughs> Or some solid nickel iron, you know, stainless steel. Uh, hmm. Anyway, you can always explain things away. But it gets more interesting than that. It gets far more interesting. <laughs> could it be artificial gravity? Ah, could it be made of metal or some composite material? See, uh, here's the strange thing. If you want to do long-term space habitation or, long or interstellar trips, you're going to need, especially if you're a creature that evolved in a gravitational environment on land on some planet, then this gravity would be crucial. But now here's a, but here's what's really the kicker. When this new horizon tried to take close look at 15, 8, 10, uh, it suddenly shut down. All the sensors went blank. They went black. It shut off. It would not communicate when they tried to take a good close look at this object. Ah, some say, well, it's just a glitch, nothing to it. And, uh, but they also say just before it lost contact, some of the witnesses to this said it was spinning just like a large spaceship would. And the craziest thing is after it got out of, out of the uh, course, when it moved away from R1, it suddenly sprung back to life. All the sensors came back on, just like it never had a problem. Dee -dee 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 -dee. What in the world? What was it? Why did the New Horizon shut down? Hmm. Like I said, it could have been a glitch, but was it jammed? Why? <laughs> Who or what would have done that? Is it a civilization lurking in the deep, dark recesses of the Kuiper Belt? Just watching. Given that we as a civilization are on the cusp of either self-destruction or becoming a breakout civilization, you know, that big, great filter, or perhaps, like I said, a breakout civilization spreading to the stars, when would there be a better time to observe a new civilization at this threshold than us here on Earth now? So maybe this is a very particularly interesting time in the history of our solar system to be watching. Maybe our generation is a crucial generation for the future of life from our planet, from our solar system. <clears throat> If that's so, if there's somebody out there, and if they're detecting this stuff, if they have a clue, and if they've been around 10 billion years, they might just have a clue, maybe, possibly, if they've been here, if they're out there, <laughs> if they exist at all, if they've not been taken up by the great filter of their own, if they ever existed. <laughs> so a lot of questions, guys, but this is interesting. It's really strange. Did these guys hit you right on that wow? I can't say. <laughs> just to observe us, wow, 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 yeah. Or do they pilot the Tic Tacs or some of the UFOs and UAPs, whatever you want to call them. Are they out there? Are they out here? Where are they? Who are they? Why are they? Are they at all? Many good questions. Let's see, this is, here we are, guys. This is what we see in the 15810 R1. This is what yeah, this is an artifact of the camera. This is the image that was gotten by New Horizons. But when it got close, nope, couldn't even get anything. That's it moving. That is it right there, guys. 
here's here is our satellite our probe excuse me deep space probe new horizons yeah so was was there's something out there spinning kind of like our own new habitat concepts to give artificial gravity have homes inside where you can grow things was it looking like this or maybe a vernal sphere another concept design yeah, or, like I said, maybe they're watching. Maybe they're out there just watching to see if we filter ourselves out or if we break out. Which is it? Do we survive, or thrive, or are we going to be buried? These are good questions, guys. Now, I'm going to do another part in this series because the whole question here of this stuff is out in the open. The Department of Defense came out and made all these pronouncements about these Tic Tacs and how they could fly and they defied our knowledge of propulsion and aerodynamics and aircraft and supposedly anything and everything we had. They said it would come up out of the sea and fly in the air and they made a lot of crazy claims. And now suddenly they backed off and they've said, oh, oh, it's just, uh, it's either air, you know, air, airborne junk, fodder, balloons, kites, or uh, it's Chinese and Russian or some foreign countries spying on us. It's drones are spying on us. That's all it is. That's been the latest pronouncement. NASA hasn't finished their studies yet. Maybe they'll say the same sort of thing. Maybe they're right, but there is some reason to have some questions about it all. Of course, maybe it's our own stuff. Maybe the other guys have stuff like we got, like I said. You know, this if, if individuals could come close in technological developments, what could nations do, even from back in the 40s? Is it possible somebody on Earth, some nations, could have developed such technologies? Or is there something bigger from beyond? Are there some bigger questions that need to be answered? Is our security as a species at risk because they're hiding this? There are some that claim that. I will go into these things in my next video on this series, guys. And that'll be like, what is uh, DOD hiding? Something like that would be what I'll call it. But, oh, yeah, here we found something on Mars. The Mars rover picked up a strange UFO flying over Mars. Look at that. Oh, that's definitely a Chinese drone. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Yeah, that's definitely a Chinese drone. What am I worried about? Nope. Nothing, nothing to see. Right over the back seat. <laughs> okay, guys. Stay tuned for my next video on this topic because this is already part one of a two-series video. I just wanted to get this out there to introduce the topic to you, to give you the background of the ancient solar systems of Mau Mau and uh, the strange 15810R1 object out there, which may actually possibly, probably not, possibly be a space colony. Why is it flinging apart? What is going on there? There is a mystery. And how many others are there out there like it? And listen to A.V. Loeb. Wow, that guy thinks that there might be a bunch of stuff out there. Now, he's saying it all could be just, you know, rocks and stuff from other solar systems coming through here. Just, just rocks. May not be anybody. He says it might be. It's that whole idea that Mau Mau accelerated that really got his attention. Why did it accelerate? Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, the this had it on with Captain Kirk on. He says, work factor two. <laughs> this wasn't going fast and speed a lot, but you get it, guys. This is highly interesting. We live in interesting times. Hopefully, we will survive the times we're in so we can get some answers. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Halo. <laughs> Again, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my next video. And Greg out.